Hey everyone, Andy Rafael from eTechnics.com, and we all know that the Strix range of cards from Azus are pretty much regarded as the best of the best. Well, MSI believe that they have an answer, and that they can compete with it for cheaper. This is the Supreme X. Let's do this. <sighs> I wish these files would transfer faster. Come on! Whoa, is that the Fire Cuda 510 NVMe drive with its blistering fast speeds of 3450 megabytes a second read, 3200 megabytes a second write, and capacities of up to two terabyte? I can have these files transferred in no time. And if I'm looking for the ultimate performance, I could even get the fourth generation Fire Cuda 520. I better check the link in the description to find out more details. So as I mentioned, Azus are pretty much the, the go-to when it comes to buying the best of the best on graphics cards. Whether it be AMD, Nvidia, the Strix is the one to go for. The only problem is you're going to pay a little bit more for it because of, you know, the, the ROG tax, should we call it. Well, MSI now believe that they have an answer and they've brought out two new cards, 3080, 3090, and they've called it quite a weird name actually. So it's called the Supreme X. I'm not overly keen on the name, I do have to admit. I mean, Supreme, that sounds pretty good. But then I guess if they called it that, everyone's going to be calling it the Chicken Supreme or I don't know. Supreme X just doesn't really sound great. It doesn't sound like it's been kind of invented for the Western market, shall we say. Now, talking about the actual products themselves, we've got a 3080 and we've got a 3090. Obviously, the specs are a little bit different on them, including the boost speed. So let's talk about that. So the boost speed on the 3080 Supreme X is 1905 megahertz. The boost speed on the 3090 is 1860 megahertz. To put that into some kind of comparison, the 3080 Strix OC that I've already shown you has a boost speed of 1935 megahertz, whereas the Asus 3090 Strix OC comes with a boost of 1890. So these are lacking a little bit in comparison to the Strix, but in theory, and stick with me here, if the cooler is better, it means that the boost speed that it's being advertised at, well, it means it will be able to stay at that sustained level for a longer amount of time, consequently giving you higher frame rates overall and less dips, which would then consequently bring the average down. So it all sounds very, very technical, but it's not really. So the other thing you have to consider is the price. So the 3080 Supreme X is coming in at 809.99 MSRP compared to the Strix OC at 899.99. That's a 90 quid difference. So in my eyes, even if the Strix outperforms this by a few frames per second, is that really worth 90 quid? There's so much more you have to think about now. And that's what I love about competition. With the 3090 Supreme X, it's coming in at 1,659.99. Whereas the Azu Strix, again, a little bit more expensive at 1,699. To put it into perspective, a Zotac Trinity, which is pretty much an MSRP card, comes in at 1,629 pounds. So this kind of comfortably sits somewhere in between on the 3090, which kind of makes sense because the boost clock sits somewhere in between and it's not too far away from the Azu Strix. So cheaper, should in theory be the same kind of performance. Yeah, I don't know, this is gonna be an interesting one, guys. Now, whether you're looking at the 3080 or the 3090 Supreme X, the only real way of telling the difference between the two is looking at the sticker on the back of it. So this is the 3080 Supreme X, and this is the 3090 Supreme X. Can you see the difference? No, they look absolutely identical. And talking about the looks, I've got to admit, they look absolutely amazing. I mean, it's a beast, I'll give it that. It's very, very big. It's got three eight pin connectors on there, no proprietary connectors here. Little bit of a weird one, it does have the BIOS switch on there for silent mode or gaming mode. And when it arrived, yes, I automatically started testing it straight out of the box, assuming that it would have been on gaming mode, but it was actually on silent mode. Hopefully this is kind of restricted to the, to the two samples that I've got here. But if not, if you are looking at buying this card and you're thinking, why am I not getting the performance I should be? It's because for some reason they put it on silent mode as default. That's a bit weird. Other things I like about the card though is the RGB on it. It just looks premium. This whole area at the top lights up with the Supreme logo. Still not overly struck on the name. It has a lovely looking backplate with again, more RGB. The fans on it, it all just looks premium. If you were to turn the RGB off, I think you could get away with this being kind of a premium workstation kind of production looking card. Hopefully that makes sense. 
but if you put all the RGB on, it's going to look like a complete extreme gaming card. So kind of the best of both worlds, right? You'll also be pleased to know that on the back of the cards, it does have plenty of multi-layer ceramic capacitors. Not that it was ever an issue, but I kind of feel like I just need to say that, right? Either way, all of that aside, aesthetics, specs, it's all about the performance, right? And we want to see exactly how this performs in comparison, generally, for the 3080 against the Strix OC and the 3090 against a reference card to see, is that little bit of extra money really worth the gains? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's do this. Run the glorious benchmarks.
So there we have it. There's the results. And I'd like to say that for the most part, it's pretty much black and white. Let's talk about the kind of cooling potential for starters. Let's get that straight out of the way. It performed great. I mean, I didn't really expect anything different from MSI. Looking at their Gaming X Trio, which you generally pay more for, this is just taking it one step further. At idle, the results were great. At load, the results were great. Admittedly, power delivery on the 3090 is a little bit excessive. I mean, 100 watts over the Zotac competition. Yeah, it just seems a little bit too much for my liking. But the acoustics were good and the temperatures were absolutely fantastic, which I can tell you as well as someone who's been using a reference-based uh, 3090 or an MSRP-based, let's call it that, 3090 for you know the best part of a couple of weeks, it makes your system very, very toasty. So I might even try swapping out for this card, sort of see what kind of difference it makes overall in my whole system. Because even if it drops it by five or six degrees, that could be a very, very good thing. Now, talking about the performance side of things, I mean, the 3090, in comparison to the Zotac Trinity, completely obliterated it. And like I mentioned at the start of this, it's about 30 quid more expensive. So in theory, if you're the other side of the pond, probably about 30 to $50 more expensive. Is that worth it? Well, yeah, it absolutely annihilated it, especially in the synthetic benchmarks. But the main one for me is going to be the 3080. This is the flagship card. It's, you know, 3090, while it can game, is, is a completely different end of the spectrum when it comes to the audience. The 3080 is where it really matters about kind of high frame rates at higher resolutions, such as 1440 and especially at 4K. So how did it stack up against the Strix? For the most part, it traded blows. It was ahead in some tests. It was behind in others. I really think MSI are onto something. I do wish and I believe that they could have done it. They could have just increased that boost clock just that little bit extra to sort of, you know, compete level to level uh, in comparison to the Strix. But alas, that didn't happen. But you are paying a lot less money for it. 90 quid difference in the UK. That's probably going to translate to about $100, $120 in the US. Do you really think that small margin where the Strix did beat this card is kind of worth that extra outlay. That's a decision that I guess each individual consumer is going to have to make. So with that in mind, I'd love to kind of hear what you guys think. Would you pay an extra 90 quid, 100 quid, $120 for that little bit extra performance that we saw from the Strix OC compared to the new Supreme X? All I want to say is it's very interesting to see card manufacturers coming out with something that kind of pushes that boundary just that little bit more and then not charging you the earth for it. Now, all we've got a really hope and dream for is that the cards, well, you know, are available to buy because stock issues are still an issue. There you go, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do and I will see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.